What we notice is that melasma is caused by chronic inflammation. So the foods that you're taking can also trigger inflammation and in return cause melasma formation. Our skin is the largest organ in the body. It requires a lot of nutrients to repair and mm -hmm. regenerate. Let's say when you're a person who eats a very healthy diet with a lot of nutrients, vitamins and minerals, your body is able to repair and regenerate to overcome pigment formation. Let's say a person eats highly processed foods, not much vegetables and fruits, that's when their body isn't able to recover. In today's age and era, our lifestyle expectation is also higher. Mm -hmm. We are exposed to more sources of inflammation like stress, mm -hmm. not getting enough sleep. So in that case, your nutrient requirement increases. It depends on a case-to-case -case basis. So if your inflammation rate is low, then perhaps a typical diet will be sufficient. You can take would be vitamin C, vitamin E, and coenzyme Q10. When it comes to lifestyle adjustment, it's most important number one is to minimize your inflammation exposure coming from your lifestyle like stress level as well as getting enough sleep and diet. Gluten and eggs are very common and it's very surprising because it's a staple diet in our daily intake mm -hmm. and we don't usually get any symptoms from it. Patients would usually be in disbelief. Mm -hmm. That's why doing a specific allergy test helps you to identify which foods you're allergic to. And another thing that we observe can trigger inflammation and promote melasma growth would be sugar intake. So sugar is pretty scary because we may think we are on a low sugar diet but most people don't realise that sugar is hidden in a lot of foods including biscuits, drinks and our snacks that we are taking on a daily basis. So if possible, try to reduce and minimise sugar intake. My usual suggestions for the patients will be when the pigmentation is reduced, then we can slowly reduce the dosage of the pigment. However, if the pigmentation surfaces again when we reduce the tranexamic acid dosage, then we have to top it up again and recheck back what is the root cause. If we wanted to have a healthier skin, to supply the surface skin with sufficient nutrition is important. Good sun protection is extremely important as well. And when we are doing this protection method, we will hydrate the skin, nourish the skin and prevent the pigmentation from forming. When we are talking about hydroquinone, the allowed percentage is about 2 to 4%. It's a prescribed medical cream and usually we suggest the patients to use until the pigment subsides, then we can start to off the hydroquinone. So if we continuously using hydroquinone as a single modality of the treatment options, patients might encounter a condition which is a side effect of hydroquinone, which we call oquinosis. So instead of they are having this melasma, they might develop other form of pigmentation usually around the cheek area. So I would suggest hydroquinone shouldn't be used as a single modality of treatment for melasma. It should be used as a combination of treatment, oral supplementations and topical skin care plus lifestyle adjustment.